Greetings, friends. I'm Mark David, founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating. Today's story is called The Missing Ingredient in All of Nutrition. So an old Jewish folktale tells of a father and a small son who built a lifelike dummy to scare the birds from their garden. Now, the birds ignored the dummy and continued to eat the crops. So disappointed, the father surrendered the garden to the birds, but he still kept hope. He visited an old wise sage on his deathbed and told him of their plight. So the old wise man said, here, take this, and he wrote something on a small scrap of paper. On this paper is written the name of God, he said, Place it in the dummy's mouth, and your garden will be saved. Well, the boy dashed to the garden, took the piece of paper, placed it in the dummy's mouth, and instantly, the dummy comes to life. And of course, the birds scatter, the dummy jumps off of his pole, and lo and behold, it begins to tend the garden with the skills of an expert farmer. The townspeople soon discovered the miraculous dummy could also build houses and plow fields and even sing and dance. And when approached with questions about the nature of life, the dummy spoke with great wisdom, softening the hardest hearts in the village. But alas, the townspeople grew a little lazy and they wanted the dummy to work rather than teach. They would pull at his arms and legs saying, come plow my fields, no, come fix my house, no, come mend our clothes. And in all the scuffle, the piece of paper with the name of God falls from the dummy's mouth. And immediately the dummy collapsed into a lifeless heap. Well, the most skilled craftsmen were summoned, but none could bring the dummy back to life. Then one of the villagers exclaimed, something has to be missing. Some vital piece of the dummy must have fallen off as we wrestled with it. Well, the villagers searched, but all they could find was this small scrap of paper with some gibberish written on it, and they threw it back to the ground. Sadly, the little boy picked up the piece of paper and he placed it in his pocket. And as he walked to the garden, He heard the distant voices of the townspeople saying, something is missing, something's missing. Well, in my own personal search for a coherent and wise approach to nutrition, amidst all the conflicting theories, I realized for me that the missing ingredient in most dietary systems was a spiritual context, a way to see the sacredness and the interconnectedness of all things. We are more than just a body, more than a tongue, more than an assortment of nutritional requirements. We're a soul clothed in the elements of the earth, journeying in a realm where matter and spirit unite in human form. The body serves as a sacred vessel fashioned through millions of years of evolution to carry the spark of life. The name of God, as it were. And without that little piece of paper in our mouth, were kind of nothing more than a dummy, just a lifeless collection of elements. Food is not merely something we eat, it's a ceaseless reminder that we are mortal, earthbound, we're hungry and we're in need. We are bound by a biological imperative that forever keeps us returning to the soil, the plants, the animals, and all the running waters for replenishment. Eating is life. Each time we eat, the soul continues its earthly journey. With every morsel of food swallowed, a voice within says, I choose life. I choose to eat. I choose to eat for I yearn for something more. But what is that something more? The great 20th century thinker Aldous Huxley refers to a view of humanity called the perennial philosophy. And this represents the collective wisdom of all the great spiritual traditions. Now, according to the perennial philosophy, we're more than a body and more than a mind. We're of a spiritual source. From it, we emerge at birth and to it, we return at death. And whenever the spiritual source seems to be a faint memory, we yearn for its presence. Some call this yearning religion or faith. Others call it the quest for happiness or inner peace. It's here in the spiritual realm that our journey into the mind of the eater best begins. 
because beneath our nutritional theories, our eating habits, our food obsessions, beneath our insecurities and embarrassments about the body, beneath any doubt as to the basic goodness of existence, there dwells within us a condition of wholeness that's born from the source. This is not a state of pristine perfection and eternal comfort where all our problems disappear and we wallow in some kind of meditative mush. It's a condition of timeless identification with something greater, where life and death and pleasure and pain, success and failure, happiness and discontent are met with a kind of equal acceptance. It's a state of equanimity where we feel fully human, alive, and in love with life no matter what happens. According to the perennial philosophy, human beings are separated from the spiritual source for one reason and one reason alone. We believe we're separate. Each one of us holds the false belief that somehow I'm not connected to all of creation. I'm alone and I'm not enough. And consequently, the state of wholeness exists only as a potential within us. And though it lies buried like a dormant seed, all beings instinctively intuit its existence. So according to the perennial philosophy, our purpose in life is to rejoin this spiritual source and embody it here and now. This is the something more we continually seek. So with this perspective, perhaps nutrition could be seen in a new light. Placed within a spiritual context, the ultimate goal of any dietary approach is to take us fully into the body and beyond the body. That is, by taking us fully into the body, our dietary system ought to enable us to experience all the good benefits of food and good health and the delight of eating and the fulfillment of our nutrient needs. But by taking us fully beyond the body, our dietary system must serve to remind us that we're feeding more than just a body. Nutrition not only keeps us healthy and attractive, it maintains us and the body as a vehicle in service to something greater. By nourishing the body with joy and reverence, we nourish the spark of life within the body. And when the body yields to disease and decay, which no amount of veggies or vitamins can prevent, we're left with the knowledge that good nutrition is important but can only take us so far. The deeper nourishment that sustains heart and soul is what ultimately matters most. I hope this was helpful, my friends. To learn more, go to psychologyofeating.com. The Institute for the Psychology of Eating offers the most innovative and inspiring professional trainings, public programs, conferences, online events, and much more. Through our Eating Psychology Coach Certification Training, you can grow a new career and help your clients break through the most compelling eating challenges of our times. If you're focused on your own eating and health, the Institute offers a great selection of one-of-a-kind opportunities to take a big leap forward in your relationship with food. We are proud to be international leaders in online and live educational events that are designed to create the breakthroughs you want most. Our professional and public programs are powerful, results-oriented, and embrace all of who we are as eaters. I'm talking body, mind, heart, and soul. For questions, you can always email us at info at psychologyofeating.com. We'll be sure to get back to you real soon. This is Mark David, founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating. Thank you so much for your time and interest.